YouTube, what is going on? Welcome back to another Identity 5 video. Before we get into this video, I would like to say that 75% of you people who watch these videos are not currently subscribed. So if you're new to the channel or enjoying the content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. I really do appreciate it. But without further ado, let's get into this video. This is going to be the Season 19 Survivor tier list. Um, I know this is coming out a day late, so I apologize for that. But um, yeah. So, um, yeah, so getting into our six tiers today, I will go through, say what each tier are, and I will also explain uh, essentially what each tier means. So our six tiers are D tier, C tier, B tier, A minus, A plus, and S tier. Um, and the D tier, essentially what that is, is that is a the tier that is basically the completely non-playable characters. They're really only good in very, very low tier, for example. You know, tier one for survivors, so like uh, worker bee, hound, elk. Once you get past that, they're just not good at all. Um, C tier as well, also unviable, but they are fine in rank in low to mid tiers, but I would not recommend them in high tiers. Um, B tier uh, is characters that are uh, viable in rank um, pretty much throughout all tiers, but really only should have one of them in the, uh, you know, per team comp. Um, and they're also somewhat usable in tournaments at high levels, but for the most part, there's just better characters. Uh, a minus tier are characters that are very good in rank and uh, are also strong um, in later rounds in tournaments after other characters are banned. A plus tier are survivors that are, you, are, are just really strong, very good in rank, uh, very good against any... Um, uh, essentially any um, any round in tournaments and then s tier are just the best characters in the game that should always be picked first and are just simply stronger than even the a plus tier characters overall um, so that's how we define the tiers now before we get into this i would like to say guys that i have worked on when i every time i make my tier list i work on with a lot of other top uh top tiers i get a lot of opinions from a lot of people before i post these tier lists so um, i know there are always some disagreements in the comments about what characters should be where but i would like to point out that not it is not just me making this tier list it is also done with a bunch of other top tier um and um and respected players uh, who have very strong opinions on this so um and again it's also not as opinion based it's also very statistical what characters are used the most what have the highest win rates and rank in tournaments you know what are used uh what just statistically speaking what characters succeed the most okay so now let's get into our first tier which is d tier and the first character in d tier is thief uh now thief has always kind of been the worst i think thief's been like bottom of d tier for like every tier list that i've done or something i'm not really sure thief is just kind of uh really bad in general unfortunately um there's just better characters there are some ways you can kite with thief thief can be very annoying for some hunters but against good hunters the way they counter thief is they do a thing called moonwalking which with that is if you have an ability that's sort of like a drag and drop ability you can just use that ability to uh to turn your camera angle away from the thief's flashlight for example if you're playing violinist you can drag your note but then hold it um, at a 180 degrees essentially so you're looking behind you and you continue walk walking after the thief while not looking at the flashlight it works on bon bon bombs um, with uh, sculptor statues it works with any uh, feast or tentacles any hunter that has a drag and drop ability which right now is most of them um, it's just really strong for uh, for dealing with thief um, so that's something to keep in mind thief kind of just gets countered by that he does have that second ability where he can drop up to three flashlights uh, which those can actually be kind of useful in some instances if you could put them in areas where um, like a narrow alleyway where the hunter can't really go around sometimes you can blind them once but for the most part it's a very it's a pretty short stun it's more effective to have something like a coordinator flare gun or an enchantress uh three stack stun or you know something along those lines right so and sometimes the hunters can again avoid the flashlight by using the moonwalking ability so it's just really not strong at any mean by any means um, and so Thief is just D tier, pretty much unviable in rank and also tournament gameplay. The next character in D tier is Lucky Guy. Now Lucky Guy has also always been really bad. He did get that buff like two seasons ago or whatever. We can actually like choose an item he wants to start with. <clears throat> he can like sort of like, what do you call it? Like wish for an item uh, without actually having to search a chest, which is not bad. But in reality, it's just not strong enough to be a good character. I say this a lot. And uh, I say this in all my tier lists when I explain Lucky Guy, but it's the same for this one. Why would you play Lucky Guy 
you're most likely going to be wishing for a flare gun. Why would you wish for a flare gun when you could just play Corded Leader? And, court, and I know, again, this sounds repetitive because I've said it in other tier list videos, but it's very important to note. Coordinator is essentially the same concept as Lucky Guy, except Coordinator's Flare Gun actually lasts 30% longer. She has 10% increased chair persistence, which means she can be on the Rocketeer for 10% longer than Lucky Guy. She also has 10% increased vaulting speed and pallet throwing speed. Why would you not just play Coordinator? She just has uh, the guaranteed Flare Gun to start out with because Lucky Guy's Flare Gun isn't even guaranteed. And she has all these extra buffs that Lucky Guy does not have. Now, of course, you can argue Lucky Guy can also wish for other items as well. But in reality, other items are usually not that useful. They can usually absorb up to one hit, which is sort of the same as a Flare Gun. Um, except Flare Gun can be more useful because it can also stun the Hunter when, for example, rescuing or something. Um, so in the long run, Coordinator is just better. There's just better characters than Lucky Guy. Sure, he gets his Veterans bonus when he takes a hit. But besides that, it's really not worth it. Um, and that's what makes Lucky Guy a D-tier character. The next character, the next character in D tier. Now I know there's gonna be some people that disagree with this, disagree with me on this, but I guarantee you, 99% of high tiers will agree with me on this. Um, and the next character is Mind's Eye. Uh, and I know a lot of you guys can be like, no, hell no, why is she so low? But I promise you guys, Mind's Eye is a very, very weak character. She is extremely luck based in that she relies essentially on the hunter not finding her. <coughs> so it's basically with Mind's Eye is if the hunter does not find her and someone dies very quickly you can still get a draw with Mind's Eye because of how fast her decoding is. Um, if the Mind's Eye gets found, she's going to kite very short because uh, good hunters will kill Mind's Eyes very quickly um, because she just, has, she just has nothing to kite with. I mean, she can see through walls, which is useful, but besides that, she has slow pallet throwing speed, slow vaulting speed, and that just makes her uh, very susceptible to hunters, very easy to be knocked down quickly, um, and it makes it very hard to kite with. Now, I know you guys are, some of you guys are going to say, well, I kite five cybers with Mind's Eye all the time. Well... The thing is, once you play against really uh, strong hunters who know how to deal with that, especially in high tiers, they will be able to kill you very quickly. Um, and there's just nothing you can do about it. Your best bet with Mind's Eye is to hide out for as long as possible so the hunter doesn't see you. But if you're hiding, it means you're not decoding because your Cypher Rush... Because um, Mind's Eye is there because of how strong her Cypher, her Cypher Rush is, how quickly she decodes. And if you're not being able to Cypher Rush because you're hiding away from the hunter, it means that you, the, the entire strategy with Mind's Eye is just completely nullified because, again, you're hiding away... Um, from the hunter so that's the biggest issue with mind's eye sure she can uh, reveal the hunter's location every uh whatever amount of seconds it is for the cooldown of the cane and she can also slow down interaction speed from the hunter for the time that the cane is activated <coughs> however in the long run that ability is pretty much useless it doesn't really do much in reality uh, as long as survivors are looking behind them when they kite paying attention to where the hunter is they won't really need to be able to see through walls like that although it can be useful in some instances but in reality, Mind's Eye is so luck-based. If the Hunter finds her, you're probably going to lose the game because the kite's going to be very short. If the Hunter does not find her, then as if the Survivor does a short kite, you can probably still get a draw because of how fast her Cypher Rush is, but um, you're still going to need a decent kite if you want to win the game, so why not just play a regular kiter that has, um, you know, fast, uh, or, uh, good kiting abilities anyways. Let me get some water. Oh, <coughs> Okay, so that's why Mind's Eye is a D-tier character. The next character in D... Oh, the last thing for Mind's Eye is that um, Hunters can literally just bring teleporting Quenching Effect. Quenching Effect reveals the location of every survivor of the map after 50 seconds um, into the match. So Hunters can simply wait for the Quenching Effect, teleport on the Mind's Eye Cypher Machine, and just kill them quickly and, and win the game. And the Mind's Eye gets found, and there goes... Again, there goes the strategy of Mind's Eye hiding away. So That's why she is D-tier. The next character in D tier is Lawyer. Now, Lawyer um, is actually, believe it or not, Lawyer is actually very strong in low, low tiers. So if you're new to the game, if you're like Worker B, uh, Hound tier, which is tier two, or maybe, maybe Elk, Lawyer can be strong because he's a very good starting character um, <coughs> in that um, he's basically, uh, he can, um, he can decode fast once he's completed a cypher machine. He has, a, you know, as a once he the more he decodes, essentially he can decode faster in the long run as the game goes on, um, which can be strong. So he can act as a decoding character in some instances. Uh, he also cannot be terror shocked. So again, if you're newer to the game and you don't really, you're not very good at avoiding getting terror shocked because you're, you know, still trying to understand how the game works stuff like that. Where it can be very strong in that instance. Um, he also gets a veterans bonus, which gets him a lot of distance. So. For example, if you have knee jerk reflex on lawyer, you vault a pallet for a pallet boost, um, you know, plus the hit bonus with veterans bonus, you get an insane speed boosting it really, really far away. And you can make a lot of distance between you and the hunter. 
because you can't get terror shocked, and that can be very strong. But uh, again, there's just better survivors for for kiting wise. He's not really meant to be a kiter. He's meant to be a decoder. And overall, there's his decoding isn't that great. Characters like mechanic, explorer, prisoner are just better. Um. So yeah, I mean, you can see, uh, you know, you can use the map to see locations of things throughout the map, which can be very good, such as like you know the hunter and stuff. But um, in in reality, it's really just not as useful um, as just having characters who have good decoding or good kiting abilities. His decoding ability is just kind of eh. His kiting ability is just kind of eh. And uh, there's not much else to say about besides that. That's what makes lawyer a D tier character. Okay, moving on to the next tier, which is C tier. The first character in C tier. Some of you may also not like this, but unfortunately, this is where this character is currently um, for a reason, and that is Novelist. Uh, now, Novelist is... Um, he's a very fun character, and he was a very fun character when he came out. The idea of being able to switch places uh, in terms of controlling, you know, another person's survivor is, is always very fun. Um, but in reality, especially in a tournament setting, it's just very weak. Because in a tournament, a lot of players... Um, will just be natu naturally have good enough skills. I mean, in a ranked setting, you know, what if you uh, get a teammate who's not very good at kiting and you are good at kiting? Well, okay. This person's kiting, you can take control of them and, and kite for them. That's pretty cool, right? But unfortunately, so in rank, he's, he's like okay, sort of. Um, but he's better, uh, he, he's better in rank, if anything, than tournament just because, uh, again, in tournaments, all the players on, on a top competitive team will just naturally be good. They won't really need their teammates to kite for them. Um, it, you know, Novelist's second ability, we can troll the hunter for, uh, I guess, five seconds. You can move the hunter away from you, which buys some time, which isn't bad. But why would I do that when I can just play a hunter, uh, server that has a more consistent ability, which is Painter. Painter can just do the same thing that Novelist does and, and buy pretty much the same amount of time, except that, um, you know, Novelist can get hit while he's trying to build up his, uh, his book. Um, whereas Painter can't too, but Painter can get his painting quicker. Um, and that's, it, it, speed is a huge part of this game. He gets painting quicker, uh, it's more consistent in dropping those paintings and, and stunning the hunter. Um, whereas, um, you know, with Novelist, it's not as quite as good because if you, here's the other reason why, sorry, let me explain this a little better. When you control the hunter, the hunter can control you, right? So you, as the, uh, if you as the hunter can move the Novelist back towards the, um, the, uh, when you, when the hunter controls the novelist, they can just move you back into yourself. So essentially, when the time, when the five seconds run out, the hunter, the hunter will be near you, and they can turn around and just kind of hit you, or you know, they can just catch up to you and uh, and hit you or whatever, right? So as with painter, a huge part of this game is transition kiting and making distance between you and the hunter. That's a huge part of kiting. Uh, that's something I talked about a lot, uh, or a little bit at least in my uh, kiting guide video. Making distance between you and the hunter and transition kiting is very important against a lot of hunters. Um, and Painter is very good for that because he can stun the hunter with his painting and then create distance while doing that. Novelist can stun the hunter, essentially, you know, quote, unquote, stun the hunter, but he doesn't make distance between you and the hunter because the hunter will just walk after you and you don't really create any distance in the long run. Sure, you can pallet stun, um, you know, the hunter if you, you know, leave them and walk them into a pallet or you can uh, make them walk through a portal. That's the best place to make them walk through a portal. But that kind of play rarely ever is actually ends up working. It takes a lot of good communication and it's just not quite as effective. With Painter, you can just put the painting in the palette and palette on them right after the painting runs out if you want to. But again, you should be using those paintings to create distance. You're just not creating distance, which is the most important thing with characters. On top of that, I know I'm talking a lot about Painter, but Painter also has the uh, the chair ability where if he gets rescued by a certain amount on chair, then he can um, he can stay at that amount, which is uh, which is very strong. And Novelist doesn't have that, so uh, that's why Novelist is just pretty much C tier in comparison to something like Painter. Not quite as strong. Okay in rank, but not good in any tournament uh, setting at all. And that is why he's a C-tier character. Okay, the next character in C-tier is Gardener. Gardener is also just... Uh, Gardener's just really bad. Uh, not like really bad, but isn't very strong in that... Um, she gets countered by chip hunters. Any hunter that has like a chip ability can essentially just counter her. Whether that's Sculptor, whether that's uh, Bon Bon. Now you can make the argument, Oh, what if I just kite in the open and I can dodge statues a lot easier? Well, sure, you can do that, but um, hitting the bubble feeds presence to the hunter, and a huge part of uh, this meta as well is not feeding presence. Sculptor feeds on presence. Once they get that full presence target statues, they're very strong. Bonbon bon feeds on presence. He gets his bombs uh, recharged a lot quicker. Just any, A lot of these hunters feed heavily on presence. Even something like Violinist feeds heavily on presence because he gets that full presence ability where he can push out his node and, um, and, uh, and snipe survivors that way and stuff like that, right? 
So, um, yeah, a lot of these hunters feed heavily on... Even Geisha, her dash is so much faster when she has full presence. So that's something you have to keep in mind, is that not feeding presence, whereas Gardener's Bubble does feed presence. Um, of course, it's nice if the Gardener gets found at the start of the match and it's against a non-ship hunter. She can take a hit, an extra hit. Okay, sure, that's not bad. But why would I not just play Psychologist at that point? Psychologist can take three hits at any point during the match, whereas, uh, whereas the, uh, Gardener cannot. She can only take it for the first 50 seconds. Yes, Gardener can make herself a second bubble, um, but uh, which can help her save while she's injured, but that usually doesn't come up too often, right? If you're at a, think about it this way. If you're in a match and uh, someone else gets chased first, right? They go down, someone goes for a save. Okay, they go down again. Then you have to go for a save. You're still full health. Or if you go for first save, sure, you can save a second time, but if you're doing that, that means you're saving without Tide Turner. You want to be able to save with Tide Turner as much as possible because you can only use it once. So you go for first rescue with your Tide Turner ability, you know, save with Tide Turner, buys the survivor an extra 20 seconds because of Tide Turner, um, and uh, because of the last effort, which is good. But then you'd rather have someone else with Tide Turner go for a rescue, which can waste even more time because it's all about wasting time for Cyphers to be decoded. So why would I, why would I, you know, want to use my bubble for a second rescue when I could just have a different survivor with Tide Turner go for a save at that point? It doesn't really make sense. So in the long run, Gardner is not that strong. Um, Ship Hunters counter her. She can be good against something like Bloody Queen because she can get another bubble. But besides that, she's she's not really good against any hunter. So um, that's what makes Gar Gardner C tier pretty much unviable. Um, she is usable in mid, you know, low to mid tiers in rank, but I would not recommend her in high tiers. And uh, she's not very uh, she's not strong in tournament gameplay at all. Uh, her, her, her chair breaking ability is also not very strong. The hunter can simply just drop the survivor, fix the chair, put him on the chair, and it wastes, you know, four or five seconds. And it the time it takes for the garden to break the chair is also four or five seconds, which means that's four or five seconds of her not decoding, which means she doesn't really gain any time back in the process, so why bother doing that, you know? Um, you can struggle free sometimes, but it's very rare, so it, it's in the long run just very weak, and that's what makes Gardener a C-tier survivor. Okay, the next survivor in C-tier... Uh, Joggy will probably kill me for this, but unfortunately it is the truth. Um, the next character in C tier is Magician. Um, Magician, the problem with Magician is he struggles heavily against a lot of the meta hunters right now. All the, 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 the hunters that get to use the most. Especially chip hunters. He struggles against Sculptor because the Sculptor statues can prevent him. Um, you know, if he's being pushed by a statue, he cannot use an illusion until the statue stops pushing him. If he gets bombed, he cannot use illusion for a split second. Um, it's just, he gets countered by Chip Hunters, Bon Bon, and Sculptor. Uh, he gets countered by Breaking Wheel, because Breaking Wheel can, uh, um, you know, they can go throw down a trap. If you try to Illusion and, you know, you, you can trap an area and then swing in the opposite direction. Because Magician's all about mind game. When you go for an Illusion, right, you usually want to run in one of two directions. You either run forward or you run back towards the Hunter to try to mind game them. And um, those are usually your two most common sort of mind games. So if the hunter just puts a trap in front of them and then swings behind them, they can usually either trap you and then... get it, It's just so hard for a magician to kite against the wrecking wheel because the traps can still trap them while they're in their illusion form. Um, so against the really strong hunters in the meta currently, the most common ones, uh, she can't. magician can be good against um, Bloody Queen, but then again, he's also weak against something like Anne. So he's he's just the problem with magician. He's weak against more hunters than he is strong against, and that's what makes him kind of a, a not so good hunter. Um, and uh, that or sorry, not a, a not so good survivor is while his ability isn't necessarily bad because it doesn't feed presence, which is useful. Um, it just it does put himself in a situation where it's he's not quite as strong because he is weak against a lot of the uh, the most common hunters. Um, and that's essentially why he's C tier. I mean, sure, once you rescue him on chair, he turns invisible for a few seconds, which he can use to create some distance, which is always useful. But again, in reality, weak against the, the most common hunters. And uh, that's what makes him sort of C tier and unviable. There's just better characters um, at kiting against these strong meta hunters than Magician. Okay, moving on to the next tier, which is B tier. These are characters that are uh, somewhat viable in later rounds in tournaments and also decent in rank. Uh, just make sure you don't use too many of them per team comp. Um, it's better to have more diversity with, uh, you know, the higher S tier characters and A plus, A minus tier characters. Um, so going into B tier, the first character in B tier is Enchantress. Now, Enchantress did get a buff where her stun cooldown, I think. I think it's her stun cooldown isn't quite as long. Um, but it's still not enough to really make her that good 
Um, because, again, the biggest part of this game, yes, uh, late game, Enchantress can be pretty strong, but the biggest part of the first kite. First kite is so important. If you have a strong first kite, you will probably win the game, or at least tie the game. If the first survivor goes down very quickly, it's very hard to win, and you will probably put yourself into a losing position. So first kite is so important, having a very strong first kite, and Enchantress is not a good character for first kite because she does not start out with any abilities. Survivors that start are, are consistent and start out with consistently strong abilities to start the match are the ones that usually have the most success um, because they're very good at kiting in the early stages of the match if they get found first, which again, Enchantress does not have. So that's what makes her a low B tier survivor again. Once she takes hits, um, she's getting against chip hunters, and once she takes like statue hits from a sculptor or bomb hits from a bonbon, bon, she gets a stack, uh, a, a stun per chip hit. So it's not like she gets half a stun; she gets a full stun. So if she takes, you know, a quarter of a damage bomb hit, she still gets a full stun from that, which is useful. But in reality, it's not as good to a point because you're still weak early game, and that's just never good for uh, for a survivor having a weak early game. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, once she heals survivors and that survivor gets hit again, then she get an extra stack, which is nice. Uh, once she takes hits throughout the match, she can get stacks. She is a good rebound kiting character because if she goes down and she has three stacks, she gets put on the rocket chair, uh, survivor goes in for rescue, and then you can three stack them. But it's not as strong because at that point, the hunter already has presence because they've already downed someone. Giving the hunter in presence and, and let, letting them unlock their first and second abilities is just very weak because then even with the three stack it's still hard to rebound kite after being rescued uh, because their abilities are stronger at that point you need to take advantage of hunters being weak in the early game because they don't have their uh their really strong abilities in the early you know early stages of the match and um, that's what makes enchantress a b-tier survivor if she is decent against some hunters again chip hunter she's pretty good against um she can also be good against something like geisha which has seen a lot of a lot more play of, um has been played a lot more uh in both china and north america in the european server so um she can be good against that but in reality she's still very weak in the early game that's what makes her a b tier survivor the next survivor in b tier is doctor uh now doctor has always kind of just been around b tier she's never really been good i mean sure doctor's nice she can take a hit and then maybe she gets her heal off in time but why would you do that when you could just play like like even barmaid would be better and i, and I personally don't think barmaid's that strong of a character uh, and i'll explain why later but psychologist just way better seer owl can take an extra hit why would you just not use these other survivors that um that are just uh more consistent doctor is so inconsistent because sometimes if you don't get your heal off in time you're just gonna you're gonna go down very quickly um and also doctor doesn't really like to transition kite doctors when they take a hit, they try to heal themselves before the hunter can hit them again. But if you're doing that, you're not transition kiting. Um, I notice a lot of doctors, when they play, they'll take a hit. They'll get their veterans bonus, but then they'll just kind of stand around and heal instead of using that veterans bonus to create distance, which is just very weak. You need to use that veterans bonus to create distance. However, if you're using that to create distance, you're also not healing, which means your ability is kind of pointless. So why would it, you're basically at that point just playing a survivor that, um, that has a speed boost when they get hit. And that's not a very good ability overall. So why would I play a character like our uh, Doctor that can do that when I can just play Psychologist, which is guaranteed three hits, right? Um, whereas Doctor is not guaranteed three hits. Um, you know, sure, Doctor can heal off quarter damage effects. She is, don't get me wrong, she is good against hunters um, like Photographer that can, you know, sort of put chip damage on you. She's not very good against Bonbon or Sculptor because if she gets chased first, um, then it's very hard to get your heal off while being chased because... You know, if you stop to camp a pallet and heal, then the bomb bottle will just drop a bunch of bombs on the pallet and they'll hit you and you won't get your heal off in time. And it also resets your healing progress if you get chipped. Um, same, with, same with Sculptor. So, she's not very good in that aspect. The only hunter she's really, the hunter she's really strong against are... She's good against Mad-Eyes because if she gets chipped with those fences, she can just heal herself off. She is good against um, Photographer because if she gets hit uh, with that uh, weird damage that Photographer does, that weird extra damage, she can just heal it off. And she's pretty good against Dream Witch because if she takes a uh, if she takes it from the Dream Witch, she can usually get a heal off before they can use their patroller. Um, or uh, you know, if you take a leech hit, then you can you know, heal yourself off. If a Dream Witch ever leeches you and they're trying to pressure you with their leech, uh, with your leech, just take your leech hit. You can just heal yourself. Your leech disappears because you got hit with it, and you just heal yourself up. So she's pretty good against Dream Witch. She's also very strong against Photographer and Mad Eyes. But besides that, just not very uh, not very good overall. Photographer. Mad-Eyes are not really used in tournaments. They're not used that much in upper tiers and rank either. 
I know they are used more in lower tiers, but not really that much in upper tiers. Um, so, yeah, overall, Doctor's just too inconsistent to be considered a, uh, a strong survivor. And that's why she's B tier. The next survivor in B tier is Wildling. Uh, now, Wildling is actually very fun. And he's not, again, he's not terrible, but he's not as good of a rescue character as um, some of the other rescue characters. The biggest issue with Wildling is that uh, his boar cooldown runs out of time. It gets less and less as the uh, as you've used it more throughout the match. So Wildling is very strong in that he's pretty much an unchaseable character. If you get found first as Wildling, you can just get on your board and the hunter's forced to leave you, which is very strong because, you know, it wastes the hunter's time. They have to go find a new survivor at another point in the map, which means that's more time being wasted for the rest of the team to decode, which is very strong. But in reality, Wildling's very extremely slow decoding does not make up for it. His decoding is 30% slower, which is that of a forward. Uh, except forward is just better because forward's harassing is a lot stronger than wildlings. Way stronger than wildlings. Um, not only can forward harass when, you know, they go for a, a balloon pickup. He can also stun if the hunter is, like, coming through and uh, survivor's kiting through an area for it. can instantly just go for the stun. Whereas wildling has to get on his boar, wait a few seconds for his rage to accumulate, and then he can go for pushes to try to slow down the, the hunter. But even then, you're not stunning them, you're just pushing them, which... Um, you know, forward stun ultimately is stronger because it stuns the hunter. It doesn't push them back necessarily, but it does stun them, which in the long run gives the survivor more distance than a wildling push, believe it or not. On top of that, if the uh, wildling goes for a push and uh, the hunter can immediately just turn around and smack the wildling's boar, it, they do not have an attack recovery from it, and they just gain free presence. So wildling just feeds free, free presence to the hunter unnecessarily, and in a meta of hunters, uh, you know, in a meta where hunter presence is so important, not giving hunters extra presence, Wildling just becomes very weak in that. So, uh, again, while he's not he's not a bad harassing character, but once the game progresses, he becomes worse because his board time is shorter. And now he is essentially unchaseable while on that boar, he is a very slow decoder and does not promote Cypher Rush in any way because of how slow his decoding is. Um, and he also, his harassing is not as strong as forwards because forward can instant harass at any point. He can balloon rescue, he can also stun hunters. Um, whereas Wildling can only push and he cannot ed harass at any point because he needs to be on his boar for a certain amount of time. Now Wildling does have an ability where you can cancel tinnitus, but as long as hunters know their spawns, have their spawn points memorized, it's not a problem for them to find survivors and know where to go. And that's what makes Wildling a B-tier survivor. Okay, the next survivor in B-tier is, uh, is Cowboy. Uh, now, Cowboy is also a very fun character, but, again, not too strong, mainly because, um, why would I play Cowboy when I can just play Patient? I know I'm doing a lot of comparisons in this video, but it's it really goes to show why these characters, what separates these characters from A+, plus and S tiers, and why they're down in B tier or C tier. Uh, Cowboy is strong in that, you know, he can lasso pallets, which makes his kiting pretty strong. He can also harass to an extent. However, it's nowhere near as, it, like, Wildling harassment is essentially better, right? And Wildling's even lower than him. So, um, Cowboy can get the Hunter to drop the Survivor, but if you're just dropping the Survivor, it only wastes a few extra seconds. And, uh, there's no really way to hit the lasso as long as you're, you know, you're just dropping the Survivor over and over and stuff. Um, it only is really strong if the Survivor dies in a very far away corner and there's no chair nearby. That's when Cowboy's lasso harassment can actually become strong. Um, but if it's to a point where... Um, you know, if it's to a point where there's a chair, you know, even sort of nearby, the hunter can just drop the survivor a couple of times till the cowboy misses the last one and share them. And that can be, and that can be very suboptimal. Cowboy also decodes, um, he decodes faster when he's with female characters, but slower with, when he, when he's with male characters. Um, so that can kind of be a bit of a problem, um, which doesn't make a huge difference in the long run, but it's better to have a patient who, you know, doesn't really, um, get affected by that uh quite as strong as cowboy you know now of course patient also decodes slower when decoding with female characters besides um besides uh the psychologist which can be a bit annoying in some instances however um cowboy also just naturally decodes 10 percent slower as well which patient does not so that also can uh, slow down the decoding progress to a point where it's really not quite as useful as Patient. Also, Patient has really broken hook areas. There's a lot of spots on maps where Patients can just hook themselves away from the Hunter, whereas the Cowboy can only lasso pallets and only lasso ciphers. Um, patient can kind of Patient can hook a pallet, he can hook a wall, he can hook up a building, he can hook wherever he wants, pretty much. So, um, 
That's what makes Cowboy not quite as strong um, as something like a patient, and that is why he is B tier. The next character in B tier is First Officer. Um, now, First Officer uh, is fine rescuer once all your other rescuers are essentially banned. But at that point, it's really better to just play uh, just fast decoding characters and not worry too much about rescuing. You know, keep in mind, guys, you can always just play res you know non-rescue characters and just bring Tide Turner, for example. If you wanted to like have a priestess bring Tide Turner or a psychologist or a patient or something like that, you can always just bring Tide Turner with one of those characters. Uh, whereas with um, First Officer, his decoding, sure, it's 20% slower, which is a little bit better than Mercenary, but the problem with First Officer is that if a hunter sees, you can see when they're using their watch. So you see them use a watch, and you really just kind of swing in the air. You just kind of guard the chair, swing in the air over and over, and you'll eventually kind of just hit them. There's not much they can do, unless you have a really, really bad hitbox. Um, but for the most part, you'll pretty much always just get that hit. Now, First Officer can save with that Tide Turner effect if you would naturally, you know, normally get stuffed. Uh, he has a five second Tide Turner with that pocket watch, which is not bad, but the more the First Officer uses his watches, the less effective they become in terms of, you know, the the, the hunter the hunter's vision on the First Officer and stuff. So that's also a bit of a problem. So First Officer is just not as consistent because, again, he's very luck based. First Officer is luck based. He relies on the hunter not guessing where his location is and swinging and hitting him, right? He also relies on not a hunter not having a large hitbox whereas even something like gravekeeper is just stronger because gravekeeper forces the hunter to hit them out of their shovel form it's not an inconsistent ability whereas first officers is because he can just get hit out of his watch randomly and take a hit whereas gravekeeper would not take a hit he would just have the shovel absorb it instead or mercenary can elbow pad past the hunter or forward can football pass the hunter first officer is just inconsistent and again a huge part of what what makes characters strong and high tier are their consistency how strong they are uh, or how consistent they are at doing well with, with their abilities and stuff. Um, how strong their abilities are. Um, what am I saying? How consistent their abilities are. I don't even know what I'm saying. How consistent their abilities are. We'll leave it at that. How consistent their abilities are. First officer's ability is inconsistent and that's what makes him a B tier survivor. Now he does have increased chair persistence, which means he can send the rocket chair longer than other survivors. But most hunters won't chase the first officer early game because he has his pocket watches. He'll simply just leave them for another survivor. Um, which is the same sort of thing that would happen with a mercenary anyway, so why play first officer when you can just play mercenary? And that's what makes him a B tier survivor. The next survivor in B tier is Embalmer. Now, Embalmer um, actually did get a buff where if he uses his coffin, um, he, uh, he creates like a bubble. I think it's for seven seconds. He gets a bubble around himself or a survivor that's rescued where they can just not be injured at all, which is actually pretty strong because before a bomber was kind of weak because basically what would happen, sure they'd have a tide turner effect, but basically what would happen is they would use the coffin, the hunter would just use teleport to go to the coffin and just hit the survivor as the exit of the coffin. And that would just be very weak, but the bubble actually gives the survivors a chance to potentially kite, which is always kind of nice, right? So um, so that's actually a pretty good ability. He moved him from low B tier to mid B tier. He's actually not bad later rounds in tournaments and against some hunters he can be good. Um, against something like Bonbon. Bon. If the Bonbon bon has teleport and they've already used it up, um, the Bonbon, bon, for example, teleports on the Embalmer, kills the Embalmer, knocks him down, puts him on the rocket chair, and the Embalmer just uses his coffin, and the Hunter can't teleport to the coffin because he's already used his teleport. And it's also good against Bonbon bon again because Bonbon bon has really good camping abilities. You don't want to save against the Bonbon because bon of how good his camping is, so the Embalmer can just self-rescue themselves. Um, it does, of course, count as a chair time, which is unfortunate but in the long run it's it's can be very useful um so and bomber is a good support character in that he you know he can do those sort of things however again he's not too good early game if he gets found first and he hasn't really had time to set up his coffin and get away from it he's gonna go down fairly quickly because he doesn't have any kiting abilities you know sure he has regular vaulting and pallet throwing speed but he again just regular kiting abilities with no extra effects is not very strong. Again, early game kiters are so important. If a bomber gets found quickly at the start of the match, he's in a bad spot. And that uh, kind of goes against the whole point of, of you know having good, strong early game kites. And that's what makes him a B-tier survivor. The next survivor in B-tier is Barmaid. Now, I originally had Barmaid a lot lower in like C-tier, but Barmaid's a little bit better now. She did get an adjustment where even if she takes a chip hit while using her drink, um, the, chip, the, the drink won't get canceled. Barmaid used to be where if you're going against something like a Sculptor or a Bonbon, 
and you know you got chipped with the with the chip ability while using that drink uh it would cancel your drink but now that doesn't happen the drink still activates so as long as you're able to actually kite out the rest of that uh that drink it's it's not bad it's it, it's it's a pretty good ability but the biggest problem with barmaid is she gets countered by the most common trait that every hunter brings in the entire game and that is blink uh if barmaid takes a hit at any point she immediately just gets blinked right after in fact it was actually during i was playing a hunter stream where I was talking about, you know, Barmaid not being a very good character. Everyone's like, no, no, Barmaid's good. And basically what happened is there was a point in the match where I hit the Barmaid. Uh, she threw down the pallet and used her drink right after she threw the pallet down. And I immediately just blinked and killed her right after. And she wasn't able to kite out her drink. Because of Blink. Blink counters Barmaid. The most common trait in the game counters Barmaid. That's what makes her not very strong. Now, against hunters that can't really afford to bring Blink early game, such as Dream Witch. They're really kind of forced to bring Patroller early game. Um... That can be... Some Dream Witches do bring Blink, but Patroller is way better on Dream Witch. That can be strong. Because Patroller, you know, they take a hit, they use the drink by the time they use the Patroller and they get up to you and hit you, your drink's already healed you. So that can be good, right? So that can be good. So, so Barmaid is actually countered to Dream Witch because of that. Um, Barmaid can also just take her... If, if she ever gets leeched at any point, she can just take her leech hit and the leech will disappear and she'll just hear, heal herself with her drink. And that's good. So Dream Witch, uh, Dream Witch is actually very weak against Barmaid. Barmaid counters Dream Witch. But Barmaid is weak against most other hunters. Bon Bon's bring Blink. Sculptor brings Blink. Bloody Queen brings Blink. Um, even something like Geisha. Some Geishas bring Blink for some reason. I don't know why, but they do. Um, and even then, Geisha can just hit you in the 8 second cooldown for a butterfly. Uh, another 8 second cooldown after that. She has 2 butterflies to hit you before her drink activates. Because Barmaid's drink is about 20 seconds. So she actually has 2 whole butterflies that you have to avoid. Which is just not very strong, right? Nyad brings Blink. Uh, mo most of these hunters just break breaking wheel she gets hard countered by breaking wheel because breaking wheel she gets rolled over sp uh, twice and then she just gets trapped and she's dead or she gets blinked and she's dead and she, she doesn't even get to use the drink because it's a one-shot hunter so barman just gets countered by pretty much every top hunter especially if they bring blink but dream witch except dream witch dream witch right now is one of the strongest hunters in the game and she actually counters that hunter so that's what actually makes her in mid b tier instead of being really bad in like C tier because she gets countered by these hunters. For example, Magician, we talked about Magician. Magician gets countered by most of the top hunters and that's why he's in C tier even though his ability is not actually that bad. Barmaid's ability is not actually that bad. She just gets countered by every hunter except for Dream Witch, but she does counter Dream Witch and that's what makes her a B tier survivor. Um, I know some people also uh, argue that, you know, Barmaid can use the speed drink to help her kite. The speed drink only gives her like a second of boost. It's not that good. It's not that good, guys. In the long run, you'll probably still end up getting hit. Maybe it can buy you a few extra seconds or give you a speed boost to reach a pallet. But in the long run, it's it's not actually that useful. So, uh, yeah. Okay, the next hunter in B tier is Female Dancer. Now, Dancer is actually a pretty fun character. Um, and she can be good in some instances on certain maps. But in certain maps, she's also really bad. She's, only, she's very map specific. But she's kind of in B tier. But basically, she is incredibly strong on Arms Factory. Because in Arms Factory, you can set up your music boxes inside Factory. You can put them inside the pallet in Factory uh, on Arms, and you can. Uh, and if any survivor kites the Factory, Factory is already a broken kite, a very strong kiting area as it is. So if you have a fast box and a slow box or something set up in Factory, and the survivor gets there, it can m m extend their kite like for so long. Because if the hunter takes their time to break the boxes, they'll just run away from Factory and just get halfway across the map before the hunter can even catch up. So female dancer on Arms Factory incredibly strong she also can be good on maps with good tight cutting areas for example you know ever sitting town she's not bad there's some decent kite cutting areas she can be decent on maps where that have two stories because when she drops down from a two story she gets a speed boost uh, a 40 percent speed boost um which is pretty good so maybe something like sacred heart hospital she's actually not too bad either but um on larger maps like moonlit river park lakeside village less tight cutting areas not as strong she's not really not really viable on those maps um that's what separates her from being an a minus tier survivor she's not really good she's only good on a select few maps um <coughs> so arms factory she's good church she's okay sacred heart hospital she's okay um but for um ever so many times she's okay but there's some other other maps not quite as strong um you know a lot of dancers will put the slow boxes in the pallet which is very useful she also has the spin ability, the the uh, I don't know what it's called, but the little the little spin dance <laughs> ability, which she can use to uh, create distance between her and the hunter. She can pick up her music boxes, which is useful. 
But besides that, um, there are just better kiting characters in general, better support characters. Not bad on Arms Factory, not bad on some other maps as well, but also very map dependent, and that's what makes her a B tier survivor. I need to get some water because I've been talking for a ridiculous amount of time. Okay. A few more left in B tier here. The next character in B tier is Prisoner. Now, I know a lot of you are also going to be upset. No, I love Prisoner. I love Luca. Why is he in B tier? Well, unfortunately, he his decoding is just not as strong as Explorers and nowhere near as strong as Mechanics. Prisoner is not bad. He is fine later rounds in tournaments. He's fine like third round. He's viable. Um, he actually, some of you will argue that you know he's used early on in early rounds in some tournaments, but you guys have to think that was actually the, the last time he was used early rounds in tournaments was a good season, a whole season ago. It was a little while back. You know, maybe last season he was very strong. Season before that, he was all right. This season, he's just not quite as good. Um, the meta for survivors, again, has shifted. Um, Prisoner's fine in rank. He's a fine rank survivor. Not a bad decoder to have, but... Um, he's just not as good as something like Mechanic. Uh, he can finish Cypher Machines, for example, if a survivor, uh, you know, good thing about him is if a mercenary, for example, has to go for a rescue and their cyber's like 90% of the way done, Prisoner can connect to it and just finish it for them. And the mercenary can go start a new one and it, it, it promotes Cypher Rush. But the biggest problem is that um, once he goes down and is placed in the rocket chair, he's essentially just useless in terms of decoding. The difference between, again, between him and Explorer and him and Me Mechanics. Mechanic can decode with her bot while she's on chair, and Explorer just avoids getting found because he stays hidden. Prisoner kind of gets found easily because, again, you, you can't really hide from the hunter if you don't know they're coming. Prisoner has an ability where um, he, he gets heartbeat later than normal survivors, which means that, you know, it's easier for the hunter to find him and for him to... He doesn't really have time to hide or get away from his cipher before the hunter reaches him. Um, so that can kind of be a problem. Uh, he does have his shock to help him kite, which is pretty good. And he has normal vaulting speed, normal pallet throwing speed, which is pretty useful, because considering that mechanic doesn't. Um, but besides that, he's pretty much useless once he gets on that rocket chair, once he gets found. He's not very good, and he doesn't really have much kiting abilities besides a single stun, which is not that useful. And again, we talk about how strong early game is. Prisoner's early game, not that good, especially if he gets found. Um, so that's what makes him... That's what makes him a B-tier survivor. His Cypher Rush, it's not that increased. He only gets about a 10% increase when he's connected to a Cypher, which is not that great compared to other decoding characters. So in the long run, sure, he can finish Cyphers from across the map. You know, sure, he has one shock to kite with. But besides that, not a great early game. His Cypher Rush is not as strong as other decoding characters. And that's what makes him a B-tier survivor. The next survivor in B-tier is Perfumer. Now, Perfumer used to be very good, but over time, Chip Hunters really dominated the meta. Bon Bon. She gets hard countered by Bon Bon and Sculptor. Um, she is pretty good against Bloody Queen and Geisha, but besides that, that's it. She's not good against Bon Bon, she's not good against Sculptor, and she's not good against Dream Witch, because Dream Witch can simply just patrol her. Um, they can just patrol her, and, um, and they perfume the patroller. They wait for the perfume to run out, the patroller bites them, and they just, the Dream Witch just hits them. The patroller can essentially counter perfumes. Um, so that's kind of a big problem. Some of you may argue that she can counter Breaking Wheel. She actually doesn't really counter Breaking Wheel. Uh, and the reason why is because what a lot of Breaking Wheels will do is they'll roll over the Perfumer, they Perfume back, they just get out of their wheel form as they're Perfuming back and just smack them, get a basic hit. And they can't Perfume that basic hit because they just Perfume back the Spike because their Perfume is on cooldown. So that's kind of the problem with break, uh, going against Breaking Wheel as Perfumer. Um... So while she may be kind of a soft counter to Breaking Wheel, it's not a very good counter overall. There's just better counters to him. Um, so Perfumer is pretty good against Bloody Queen, but that's about it. Kind of the same thing as like Barmaid's good against Dream Witch. Perfumer's good against Bloody Queen. Um, and Geisha. So I guess that gives her a little bit of an edge. She's also pretty good on two-story maps because she can... Um, she's also good against Soul Weaver, and Soul Weaver is pretty popular. But besides that, she's decent on two-story maps because... You know, you can go to a two-story area, perfume, and then just drop down from the two-story. The hunter has to wait for the perfume to wear off. Or else if they drop down after the perfumer, they'll just perfume back up the stairs. And, uh, you know, essentially break the hunter's ankles, as we like to call it. So, she's not a bad rescuer um, as well, because she can perfume. But, for the most part, you want broken windows, so you can kite until your perfume cooldown runs out. If your perfume gets baited out by the hunter. So, uh, yeah. So, perfumer overall, good counter negation, good counter to... 
um, to Bloody Queen. But again, besides that, she does struggle against a lot of the meta hunters. Just not quite as strong as what she used to be, unfortunately. And that's why she's a B-tier survivor. The next survivor in B-tier and the final survivor in B-tier is Prospector. Now, Prospector is a very fun character. And he can actually be good in some instances. Um, he's a pretty good kiter in that he can use those magnets... Uh, to uh, against hunters with small hitboxes, he can use the the repel to push them away. Uh, against hunters with larger hitboxes, you'll have to attract them into objects, usually, uh, which can be which cannot be isn't bad. And then every uh, um, you know every time he runs by a metal object, whether it's a locker or a cipher machine, it does have a cooldown. But when the cooldown's up, he gets a very fast speed boost from that, which is actually pretty pretty broken. Um, uh, Prospector can also uh, he can also harass. His harassing is nowhere near as strong as something like Forward or even Wildling, but he can technically harass. If a survivor ever happens to kite by his Cypher machine, he can use his Magnus to stun the hunter by the survivor an extra second or two, but eh, the stun is very short, so it doesn't really matter. Also, his harassment can be... Um, it, it's not as strong in that the hunter can simply just drop the survivor right before the Magnet attracts them, whereas with Forward, it's harder to time that, right? Um, even Cowboy, it's harder to time that. So while Prospector is a pretty good kiter, he also decodes at regular speed, which is pretty useful. Um, his magnets are uh, not great for harassing, but they can buy some time, which is pretty useful. Uh, actually, some Prospectors, what they do is they'll, they'll magnet the hunter once, stun them, and then they'll magnet the hunter again, um, and then stun them a second time. But that only works if the hunter didn't drop. If the hunter dropped the survivor, then they don't get to use that ability a second time. Because if they use it a second time, then they'll just drop them again. Like, they'll just keep dropping the survivor like a cowboy, right? Um, so it, it's just not quite as strong, uh, as something like forward, so. Uh, but yeah, his kiting overall, it's not bad. His decoding is at a regular speed. He does get good at the speed boost from the, the ciphers. Um, he might actually be an A- tier character now that I'm thinking about it. But right now we have him, he's around B tier, on the verge of B tier and A-. minus. Prospector, pretty good character. Later rounds in tournaments, also viable in rank. Can harass, not a great harasser, but can harass. Um, pretty good kiter overall and a, and a normal decoder. So not a bad character to have around on your team. Okay, guys, so I do have to be a little bit quieter here because my parents are trying to sleep, so I'm not trying to, like, wake them up and get them mad at me. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> anyways, moving on to the next tier, which is A-minus tier. The first character in A-minus tier is Explorer. Uh, now, Explorer is um, currently the... Uh, besides... Well, Postman can act as a decoder as well with the decoding letter, but um, Postman... Uh, sorry, Explorer, rather, is actually stronger than Prisoner and uh, Mind's Eye. And the reason why is he's actually in a way an unchaseable sort of uh, decoding character because he can stay hidden the only hunters that can really find him well are feaster and dream witch but you still can use those tentacles to point at the location of the uh of the explorer and dream witch can you know see survivors with the main main body form a lot easier than other hunters can um so explorer is just there's not really much to say about explorer he's just a really good character because he can actually hide from the hunter uh, he can feed tinnitus which makes it hard uh, for the, you know, which makes it hard on the hunter because they, they want to look for a survivor nearby, but if the explorer is well hidden, it's very hard to find them. So explorer can waste a lot of the hunter's time that way. Um, on top of that, he's just, yeah, he's a decoding character that is unchaseable because it's very hard to be found. He, he is technically chaseable if he gets found, of course he's chaseable. But if he's not found, which he's, again, very good at hiding, then he's just, uh, he's very strong in that way. The only reason why he's not higher up is because his decoding overall isn't that much increase. If you search... You know for a password page and then you decode normal you know you get some extra decoding progress than a regular decoder but it's not so much so to a point where it's too relevant the biggest downside with explorer is that you have to like walk sometimes you have to walk halfway across the map to find your page which can be really bad on big maps normally you'd want to play explore in something lakeside village this is a lot of good places to hide but sometimes your pages are so far across the map where you lose a lot of time to go look for them so um that can be the biggest downside to explorer is looking for uh, those pages really far across the map but yeah again he's a good decoder because he's very hard to be found and if he's not found he's unchaseable which makes him a, a strong solid uh, a minus tier character the next character in a minus tier is personally my favorite character and that is gravekeeper uh gravekeeper has used to be up around high a plus tier, but he's kind of fallen off the tables to down in a minus tier simply because he feeds presence to the hunter we talk about this a lot feeding presence um in this meta is currently not as strong uh, and Gravekeeper, when you get that shovel hit, he does feed presence to the hunter, you know, when he when he, uh, when he he gets hit out of his shovel. So that's the biggest downside to Gravekeeper. Now, he is a good rescuer because of a couple of reasons. One, if he gets cut off by the hunter from a distance and he's in that shovel form, it's really hard 
for the hunter to um, to actually stuff the gravekeeper. Because normally hunters like to stuff rescuers by cutting them off from a distance and trying to get a hit on them early. Um, and if you're in your shovel form, they hit you out of your shovel, they go into attack recovery, you still make the rescue really easily. Now the only hunter that this can sometimes fail against is, for the most part, Bon Bon, because they can bomb you out of your shovel. Um, which is kind of a bit of an issue, um, but for the most part, it works against, it, it's fine against most hunters. On top of that, once he gets out of that shovel form, if he's able to make it all the way up to the chair in shovel, uh, he has that increased rescue speed by 50%. So you can sometimes, against a lot of hunters, you can just jump out of your shovel and instantly rescue, and they really can't terror shock you because of how fast you rescue. You do have to be careful, though. Sometimes hunters will immediately swing, so make sure you don't get terror shocked that way. Um, they'd have to essentially predict your rescue to, to get that off, but... If they're not able to do so, you can get rescues off. Gravekeeper is a character that's, again, very hard to be stuffed. And he's he isn't unchaseable, but he's not easily chaseable. Because all he has to do is throw down a pallet nearby, shovel under it, force under to break it. And you're very fast in your shovel form. You can make a lot of distance between you and the hunter that way. So, well, Gravekeeper is a good kiter and a very good rescuer. And a pretty fast decoder for a rescuer, only minus 15%. Uh, he does, unfortunately, feed presence to the hunter. And that is the only reason, for the most part, why he is in a minus tier. Okay, the next character in A minus tier is Coordinator. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but Coordinator is uh, Coordinator is a very well-rounded character. She has rescue potential. She has good decoding potential. She has good kiting potential, um, and she can support as well with that flare gun. So basically, with Coordinator, she's a rescuer that decodes at normal speed, of course, until a survivor gets placed on the rocket chair. But when no one's on rocket chair, she decodes at a normal speed in the early game. Uh, she can support someone, for example, if someone kites by her cypher machine, she can shoot the hunter and allow that survivor to create a bunch of distance between themselves and the hunter, which is very strong. Um, she's a good kiter in that she has increased vaulting speed by 10%. Um, she can use that flare gun to help herself kite as well. And she can rescue against hunters with really good camping abilities like Sculptor and Bonpa. Now, the only downside you have to watch out for with Coordinator is, well, two things, actually. Hunters can dodge the flare gun by going behind objects. They can also block the flare gun with a statue if you're not careful, if you're going against a Sculptor. So that's something you have to keep in mind. But yeah, on top of that, Coordinator has increased chair persistence. She sits on the rocket chair longer than other survivors, which is really good. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So, Co Coordinator is just a, a really well-rounded character. Good support, good decoding, um, good kiting. Uh, she just has a lot to work with, brings a lot to the to the team. And again, is very good at rescuing against hunters with good camping. Now, a lot the most common argument is, well, okay, you can just bring excitement. Well, if you're bringing excitement, that means you're not bringing one of the abilities you preferably have, such as Blink or Teleport, which means that you're going to get kited longer in the early game. If you don't have Blink, it's harder to get kills earlier on. So that's kind of the downside with that as well. So that's something to keep in mind. So Coordinator, solid A- tier character, very well-rounded. One of the best, most balanced characters in the game. Uh, yeah, Coordinator, A- tier. Okay, the next character in A- tier is Painter. Now, Painter was another character we talked about in comparison to something like Novelist. Or Painter is just a lot better. There's not really much to say about Painter, but for the most part, uh, he's a character that creates a lot of distance with those paintings. We talk about transition kiting and not feeding presents being a huge part. Painter does both of those things very well. Once he puts up those paintings, he does not feed presents because uh, it just essentially suns the hunter. And during that time when the hunter's looking at the painting, the painter can use that to create a lot of distance between themselves and the hunter and essentially transition kite away. Now, the biggest downside to Painter is some hunters can actually... Uh, change their camera angle and look uh, look around the painting or just not look at the painting at all and go around it and that can kind of be a, a downside to painter but for the most part uh, painter if you, as long as you put your paintings in good areas you can usually force the hunter to look at them and you can have pretty good kites on top of that painter also has that chair time if you're rescued at any point on a chair as painter then uh, the next time you put on chair it continues at that time so if you're rescued after half doesn't matter painter's not affected by it um if you're rescued uh, like immediately, then it doesn't matter. Painter still has a full chair time once he gets placed on the rocket chair again. So overall, Painter is just very strong with that chair time. With the ability to transition kite with those paintings by stunning the hunter and not feeding presence is just very strong. And that's what makes Painter an A- tier character. The last character in A- tier is Acrobat. Now, Acrobat I actually had um, a lot lower, I think, last season. But this season, Acrobat... He's actually very strong of a character because he can actually, not only can he kite, he can also support, not exactly in the way you think, he's more of supporting when rescuing. That's the most common strategy you'll see competitively with uh, with Acrobat. 
And essentially how that works is Acrobat will go for the rescue when the hunter go hits the Acrobat, goes into attack recovery. The Acrobat will get the rescue and then drop a slow bomb on the hunter, which will slow them down and allow, sort of like a postman dog, it will allow the survivor who is rescued to make distance between themselves and the hunter and potentially rebound kite. On top of that, he can also use his flames against something like a, uh, his flame ball uh, against something like a, uh, a bond bond to cancel their bombs, and you can get easy rescue that way as well. Acrobat also has the ability to jump over low hanging walls and even off of two story areas um, that normal hunters are not able to go around. As this is most commonly seen on something like Leo's Memory. Also on Moonlight River Park, you can actually jump over the platforms uh, on fourth stop is the most common place. You can kind of just loop that platform at fourth stop. And there's nothing the hunter can really do. The only hunter that can really deal with this is like Geisha for the most part. The rest of the hunters pretty much will struggle. Um, and yeah, Acrobat's just uh, a really strong kiter. He can support with that rescuing. Um, he decodes at a regular speed, which is very strong. His only downside, of course, is that he opens the exit gate slower than other survivors. Um, but for the most part, that's not too big of a problem. Um, uh, you know, hopefully you don't really get in that situation. So yeah, good kiting character, a character that can rescue slash support and also decodes uh, at a regular speed. Acrobat is a the best character in A minus tier. Okay, so the next tier is A plus tier, and the first character in A plus tier is Toy Merchant. Um, now, Toy Merchant has been a lot lower in the past. Um, she was originally, you know, down around. Um, she was originally down around like B tier, C tier when she first came out, but it's she's really kind of come out to be a character that has a lot of support potential. Not only can she also waste a lot of time, her kiting isn't necessarily the strongest but she wastes a lot of time in a manner of speaking. So essentially what I mean is with Toy Merchant, you have, um, you know, the ability, first of all, in terms of support, you can set up your catapults, which can catapult survivors up into strong kiting areas. For example, you can put a catapult towards the bottom of the ramp on Big Boat on Lakeside Village. You can propel the survivor up into that ramp, which they can use to get on a Big Boat, which is an excellent kiting area. Um, you can, you know, use the catapult to throw them up into one of the two-story buildings in Ever Sleeping Town. Uh, there's just a lot of cool little tricks you can do with Toy Merchant to help your survivor, um, your survivor teammates kite longer. Now with Toy Merchant herself, you can essentially use that uh, the glider. Once you get on that catapult, use that glider. You can stay in the air for long periods of time. If you propel yourself, if you jump off of a two-story building, and you, even without a catapult, if you jump off of a two-story building, um, you can use that glider to uh, to make a lot of distance between you and the hunter. So normally when you drop down for a two-story building, you're like, okay, this kind of sucks, the hunter's just gonna drop down right after me. Well, no, Toy Merchant can just get use her glider and fly a lot farther away uh, from the hunter. Even better, what a lot of people actually kind of underestimate is if you put your catapult on a two-story, in like on the top of a two-story area, and you jump off of it with the on the catapult with the Toy Merchant and use your glider, you get so high off the ground, you can go incredibly far and make tons of distances between you and the hunter. So much so that it's like ridiculously hard for them to catch up and it takes them a long time. So it's just really strong um, for the for the merchant if you have that glider set up on top of a two-story building. This is why she's especially strong on maps like Ever Sleeping Town, Chinatown, Lakeside Village. Any map that has a good two-story area they can propel yourself off of with your glider is just uh, incredibly powerful. Um, so because of these things, Toy Merchant can waste a lot of time with that glider when going out of a two-story building. Um, with that catapult, she can also support her teammates and propel them into strong kiting areas. Because of all these things, Toy Merchant is a plus tier. She also counters Breaking Wheel. Uh, and the reason why is that the Breaking Wheel comes up to the Toy Merchant, she can do one of two things. She can jump on her glider immediately, and the Breaking Wheel has to wait until she comes out of the sky before you can roll over them, which just wastes a bunch of time for free. Or what a lot of Toy Merchants will do is they'll... Uh, they'll kite around their glider until the braking wheel gets two spikes, so they get two spikes to get out of wheel form. They'll just jump on the glider and just fly ridiculously far away. Uh, jump on the glider, use their, their, um, their, uh, sorry, jump on the catapult, use their glider, and just get really far away from the braking wheel, make them go back into wheel form to catch up to them, and it wastes a ton of time. And because of these things, Toy Merchant is an A-plus tier, tier character, uh, good kiter. She can also rescue. She can even bring Tide Turner, because she can just get on her glider, fly all the way uh, up to the chair and just drop down next to the chair and get the rescue and the hunter cannot cut the, cut her off from a distance so not only can is she a good rescuer she's a good supporter and also a decent kiter as well this makes her an a plus tier character and uh very strong in the current meta for survivors the next character in a plus tier is batter 
Uh, now, Batter, um, well, I just took three minutes and 30 seconds to talk about Toy Merchant. Okay, Batter, um, when he first came out, a lot of people didn't think too much about him. They thought he was fun, but not too good. But he's actually turned out to be a very strong character. Not only is Batter a good kiter, he also can harass and rescue as well. Batter has that increased vaulting speed, increased pallet throwing speed. Um, he can also kite in the open. This is very strong against hunters like Sculptor. And we talk about how Sculptor's gets countered by kiting in the open because you go in those statues. You can avoid those statues in the open. You can prevent the hunter from pushing you into walls with the statues. And Batter can kite in the open, dodge the statues, and just use the balls to knock the, the Sculptor back when they get close. On top of that, Batters can also reset their, um, their ball cooldown. Uh, what they'll do is they'll essentially go in, and they'll hit, they'll hit uh, the hunter with the ball. They'll go into their rage mode and immediately cancel it. And what that does is it resets your ball cooldown. So you can immediately use another one right after. So you can use back to back um, for your first two balls, which is really strong. So Batter is a good kiter. He can also um, he can also harass. For example, if the hunter uh, is going after a survivor, you cut by the Batter. The Batter can knock the hunter back, get some distance to the survivor for their kiting. Um, he can also uh, rescue at half health if used properly. If he goes into his rage mode um, and the hunter's in the chairing animation of chairing a survivor on the rocket chair, the batter can hit the hunter into the chair, stun them, and get the guaranteed rescue uh, even if the batter's at half health and normally they would be they would you know be stuck. But they can just go ahead and do that, stun them that way, and just get a free rescue. So batter has a lot of things they can work with. Um, he's a good kiter. He can harass as well. He gets that speed boost when the survivor goes down. And he is a good rescuer overall. Decoding, about 20, uh, 20, I think it's 20% slower, which is not great. His decoding slowed down a little bit. But for the most part, he is a strong, uh, a good harasser, solid harasser. Very good kiter, very good rescuer. And that makes him an A-plus tier survivor. The next survivor in A plus tier is Postman. Now, some of you like to think that Postman's not that good, but Postman is a strong character. Postman has the has game changing sort of support letters. One of them being the decoding letter. That one ends up being the most important in the early game because you typically want the um, the main rescue character to finish their cipher machine early on. If they're able to finish their cipher machine early on, it means that they can um, uh, it means that they can go. Uh, rescue when the first survivor goes down. In a lot of situations, if the rescuer is able to finish their cipher machine before the first kiter goes down, the survivor team already is in a winning position because then the rescuer doesn't have to go uh, back to their cipher machine. Because you want to be able to pop your cipher machine, go for rescue, and then immediately start a new one, and that promotes cipher rush. If you're forced to go to your back to your halfway across the map to go to your cipher after you rescued, then the cipher rush is getting slowed down a lot. You're losing a lot of decoding time. So you want to finish that ahead of time. So postman giving a letter um, can be very beneficial. On top of that, he also has some supporting letters, uh, such as you know kiting letters that it can increase vaulting speed or increase uh, running speed from the survivors, which is pretty good. He also has some kiting potential for himself. He has that postman dog, which you can throw onto the hunter, which will slow them down, uh, sort of like a you know like a dancer slow box, but it makes them even slower. It makes it so the postman is actually faster than the hunter, um, which is also very strong. That's especially again, especially getting in something like sculptor because if you kite in the open, if you want to dog the sculptor. Use the dog on the sculptor, slow them down, and you can kite in the open for free without taking any hits. Uh, it's also postman's also strong against breaking wheel because what happens is once you get, you know, spiked by the breaking wheel, they get out of their wheel form to start chasing you in normal form. You as soon as they get out of the wheel form, just throw a dog on them. It'll slow them down uh, for a little bit and, get, and it gives you some distance. Which the biggest downside to going against breaking wheel is if you take a spike hit. Uh, if you take two spikes, the breaking wheel gets out immediately, hits a trap on you, and kills you. Then you're in a really bad spot as survivors. But if you have a character that can um, immediately create distance between themselves and the breaking wheel, that easy. That's essentially counters breaking wheel in a manner of speaking. In this case, postman, because he dogs the breaking wheel, makes distance between him and the breaking wheel, and it puts them in a really good position. Which the survivors in a good position. So not only are his letters very useful, he can also give a gate opening letter speed, which increases the gate opening speed for the survivor that the letter was given to. They can also see the location of the dungeon if you know the survivors didn't know. In most instances, you usually will have seen it at some point throughout the match. However, it's also very useful um, just to have the gate opening letter is incredibly powerful, though. It gives the hunter almost no time to get to the exit gates, no time to kill survivors and teleport. Um, so that's very, very strong overall. And because of these things, Postman is a strong A plus tier character. Okay, the next character in A plus tier is Patient. Now, Patient was originally high A plus, even close to S tier, but unfortunately, he was nerfed where his hook range is essentially shorter. Um, 
which actually kind of hurt him quite a bit. At first, it didn't seem like a big deal, but it actually is kind of annoying. His hook, hooks aren't quite as broken as they used to be. Still very strong, and he's still a, a solid A plus tier character. Just not as, not quite the uh, high A plus to S tier range he was in originally. Still mid, mid of A plus though, so not bad at all. Um, the biggest thing about patient is we talk about characters not feeding presence patience has a transition kiting ability that does not feed presence he can use those hooks to make distance between himself and the hunter he can also kind of go above and beyond in that he can hook himself into broken kiting areas um sort of like the toy merchant catapult just he can do it instantly with his hook and it doesn't have to have a catapult set up for example um the birdcage area on sacred heart hospital he can hook himself into the birdcage window into hospital on ever sleeping town he can hook himself up to the two-story buildings um on Lakeside Village, he can hook himself onto the ramp. Leo's memory, he can hook himself up into the two-story. Uh, there's just so many strong things, strong hook areas, broken hook areas, that Patient still has available even after the nerf. Um, the biggest downside, again, is he can't transition quite as far away as he used to be able to because the hook range is shorter. So if he wants to hook off at something like a tree, for example, he has to actually get closer, um, which, uh, closer to the tree, and he can't get it, you know, so high off the ground. So, again, not quite as good as it used to be, but still very very strong in general uh, he's a good kiter good transition kiter can also rescue if you get cut off from a distance you can simply hook an object uh, hook a tree pull yourself closer to the chair and get all of the chair uninjured in most instances so yeah so overall patient is just uh, a good rescuer a uh, very strong transition kiter very broken kiter in certain areas as well and that's what makes him um an a plus tier survivor the next survivor in A-plus tier is actually one that I personally love. Uh, I don't play her too much, but I actually want to get into playing her more because she's very fun, and that's Entomologist. Entomologist is pretty strong in rank, but in tournament she's incredibly strong. Entomologist has the potential uh, to change games just like a forward. Uh, the reason why she's not quite S-tier is because uh, she just doesn't have the... Um, well, she may be a supporter and a kiter, she doesn't really have the sort of uh, rescuing ability that a lot of the Esther. A lot of, you notice a lot of the Esther characters have either really good decoding or really good rescue on top of their um, on top of their other abilities. Entomologist just sort of has only two out of the uh, you know only about two of the traits that make him a good character, which is you know kiting and supporting. But even so, her kiting and supporting is so strong it makes her high A plus tier. So basically, with Entomologist, she has. The ability to use those bees to push the hunter away from survivors. That's the most common form of support we see with this character. So basically, um, for example, uh, the hunter is chasing a survivor in a certain area. The survivor kiting will communicate to the entomologist where they're kiting. And the entomologist will bring the bees in and use the bees to push the hunter away from the survivor they're chasing. And it creates distance for what? Transition kiting. Right. Um, so that's really uh, So that's really strong. Another strategy we often see with Entomologist is um, they'll leave the bees nearby when chasing a survivor. They'll wait for the survivor to take a hit. When the hunter is in their attack recovery, they'll push the hunter back as their attack recovery is going off. That creates a lot of distance between the survivor that got hit and the hunter. And the hunter can't do anything about it. They're in their attack animation and they can't move. They have to wait for the animation to end so the Entomologist can just freely push them away. Um, on top of that, Entomologist, when she's kiting, she does not leave a trail when she kites. You can, however, see the Entomologist through walls for five seconds after chasing her, um, after being, after, you know, seeing her. Um, but she does not leave a trail, so you can essentially break the hunter's ankles sometimes, which is pretty strong. Um, also on narrow areas, areas where they cannot grow, because the bees, the bees are kind of, the bees are kind of thick, like, <laughs> they take up a lot of space. Um, so, you can... Um, you can use your bees if the hunter comes close to you. you can ride your bees around when the hunter comes close to you just get off the bees make the hunter walk through the bees and it slows them down and it slows them down incredibly it makes a ton of distance between you and the hunter you force the hunter to essentially kill the bees and if they're doing that they're you're just making a lot of distance for free so uh, that's uh those are some of the, the upside entomology she's a great kiter great support character the the final thing we'll see with we see with entomologists is if someone's if the hunter's camping and it's a good camping hunter such as bonbon bon or sculptor or something like that you can use the bees to help support a rescue instead of having two survivors go in for a double rescue you can have the entomologist go bees go in for support you can push the hunter away and the survivor can get a free rescue off and that prevents 
um, that prevents Cypher Rush from being slowed down because the Entomologist is still on her Cypher Machine. If she's using her bees, she's not going halfway across the map to help rescue. She's staying on her Cypher, taking a few seconds to use the bees to push the hunter away so they can, the rescuer can get a free save, and then go right back to decoding, and Cypher Rush is almost not slowed down at all. So because of these things, Entomologist is high A-plus tier, um, one of the best characters in A-plus, very strong kiter, very strong support character. Okay, moving on to the last character in A plus tier, that is Psychologist. Uh, now, Psychologist was originally S tier, but she did get nerfed. I think it was uh, her whistle time went from five seconds to seven seconds, something like that. Maybe it was four to seven. But before the heal time with the with the whistle was very fast. You could sometimes get it off mid kite. Uh, you could get it off mid kite, especially against Dream Witch. Now it's not so strong because seven seconds does take quite a while. Um, so it's very rare that you're actually able to get that heal off. Um, but still, Psychologist is so strong to a point that she can take three hits on her first kite. Characters that kind of break the game, by break the game I mean being able to, uh, because you normally would take two hits, right, to go down as a survivor. But characters that can break the game by taking, for example, three hits, you know, guaranteed three hits. Characters that are less consistent, like take Perfumer for example, she can take up to five hits when she uses her perfumes properly. But it's in, it's less consistent because the hunter can simply just bait them out. Psychologist, you can't bait anything out. Psychologist is guaranteed three hits as long as it's not a chip hunter, and that's incredibly strong. That breaks the game. She can even if she goes down to, like very fast as well, and she still has a little bit left on her bar uh, with her ability. She gets healed when she gets rescued off the chair or picked up off the ground as long as there's no tide turner. So psychologist literally can you know in that instance she can take up to four hits. I mean she can take up to so many hits. Um, that it's just incredibly hard for uh, the hunter to deal with her. Now, she does get countered by a select few uh, hunters. For example, Bon Bon, she's very weak against because you can chip them with the bombs. Uh, photographer, she's very weak against because you can, uh, you know, you can um, deal that extra damage that Photographer has. However, something you have to keep in mind is she can also heal off, like, the, the quarter damage. For example, if there's, like, a mercenary that has a quarter damage on from Photographer, she can heal it off with the whistle. She will take the damage, of course, but if Mercer needs to go for a rescue, then heal off the damage, let him go get a rescue. Um, so that's another th strong thing about Psychology. She's just a better version of Barmaid, whereas Psychologist does not get countered by Blink. Barmaid gets countered by Blink. You can simply just hit the Barmaid and then Blink them right after, um, and she won't get her heal off and get the three hits. Psychologist guarantees the three hits. She'll take the hit. If you Blink her, she can still take another hit after that, and that's just incredibly strong. Also, the ability to heal survivors from across the map is just very strong as well. She doesn't necessarily have kiting abilities but the, the fact that she can take three hits you can also uh, if she runs by a patient she can pull herself towards the patient to transition kite away from the hunter as well which is very strong psychologist is just a very strong character uh can force up to three hits can heal survivors from across the map very very strong overall in a plus tier unless she can also uh she also if she can take three hits she's also a good rescuer um uh, it's very hard to stuff a psychologist because again how are you gonna hit someone three times when camping you're not um so she also can act as a good rescuer as well in some instances and that's why she is the best character in a plus tier okay moving on to the final tier which is s tier you're going to notice this s tier has actually changed quite a bit since we've seen uh in the last in the previous seasons but the first character in a plus tier is little girl now little girl was um she was a little bit higher in s tier when she first came out and then she was nerfed where she couldn't connect combine with the server for 20 seconds after being rescued. Uh, and that moved her kind of to the bottom of S tier. And then she's nerfed again where if a, she's combined with someone and that person takes a hit, um, then she'll immediately disconnect from them. And that might actually move her down to A plus tier, I'm not sure. She's right now just kind of on the verge of A plus and S tier. But currently I have her just barely in S tier again. She could potentially still be A plus after the, uh, once, you know, once this nerf is really, um, starts to impact her and stuff. But... For now, she's between A plus and S tier, right? So we're having her about right on the verge of S tier here. So Little Girl is just a character that's sort of another sort of breaking the game ability in, in that it's like, you know, you have um, uh, the fact that you can take a hit and go combine with a survivor and then force the hunter to either chase that new survivor or, um, or just change targets is incredibly strong. A lot of strategies we'll see with Little Girl is they'll use... Um, kind of sort of like heavy rescuer comp because you don't really want to chase the rescuer So as a hunter if you go around the map you find like the mercenary first You're probably gonna leave them because you don't want to chase mercenary because of elbow pads and 
increase chair persistence. If you find forward, you're not going to chase them. You're going to leave them. Then you're going to find little girl. You're going to chase her. She already has really strong kiting potential because she has those pages that she can use to push the hunter away, which is really good. Once you catch up to the little girl and finally get a hit on her, she's just going to combine with like the mercenary, for example. And the mercenary has great kiting potential and you're just never going to catch them. So then as the hunter, you're forced to change targets, go look for a new character. Maybe you find the forward already kind of sucks, but you got to chase them at that point. And the mercenary will just heal up the little girl and the survivors reset and are in such a good position just right out the gate. So not only is Little Girl a really strong kiter, um, she can also prevent herself from dying by combining with an unchaseable character like Mercenary. Um, on top of all of this, she can literally teleport across the map. I mean, that's literally just, that's broken. The fact that she can literally just teleport across the map. If you go load into the matches, Little Girl, you get a bad spot. You're like, oh, this is a bad spawn. The hunter's probably going to come chase me. There's no good kiting areas here. Oh, wait, actually, just kidding. Ha, ha, ha. And you just teleport across the map to a uh, survivor that got a good kiting area and just go there. And you're already in a great spot. If you see the hunter and coming from the distance and you don't, if you're not within the, uh, the fear radius yet, then again, just teleport across the map before the hunter can catch up. For example, Moonlit River Park. You can see the hunter coming from long distances. Just teleport away before they can catch up to you and you're gone. You're on the other side of the map and the hunter has to change targets. So just that ability is so strong. It's also very good late game when you're trying to prime a cipher machine. You can teleport across the map to help someone prime the last cipher. Um, you know, in case someone's about to go down, you can go help them speed up that decoding. Prime that cipher machine, get ready for endgame. Um, you know, also late game as well, or uh, endgame as well. If someone opens the exit gate and you're not to the gate yet, just teleport to them and get escape the gate with them for free. GG's. Just like a priestess world portal, so strong. Um, so yeah, little girl is just incredibly strong. She has good kiting. Uh, she can also support, she can also take make uh, other teammates take guaranteed body blocks by combining with them. She can teleport. Uh, she just has so much going for her. And this is what makes her a um, A plus S tier character. Okay, moving on to the next character in S tier. Now, this character has actually been bumped down quite a bit. Uh, I've had this character as the best character in the game for quite some time, but now she got a pretty significant nerf that's knocked her down towards the bottom of S tier, and that is Mechanic. Uh, Mechanic used to be the best character in the game. Her bot decoded so incredibly fast, it was so hard for the hunter to deal with. Uh, if you found the mechanic first and killed her, the bot would do an entire cipher super fast, get it out of the way, and then go help with another cipher machine or go to the exit gate and be ready to open the exit gate when, we pop, when they pop the cipher machines. Whatever it may be, the bot was just so strong. Now the downside to the mechanic is that the bot's decoding is slowed down a lot. It was nerfed. Um, I think it was 25% faster, and now it's been nerfed a lot. So now, um, now you don't really, since the bot decodes a lot slower, you don't really have time as the mechanic to do an entire cipher, then go help another cipher, and then or do another cipher, then move your bot to the exit gate. You can do an entire cipher by yourself with the bot, of course, but you don't really have that extra, and you won't really have the extra energy because of how long it takes for the bot to pop the cipher. You don't really have as much extra energy to work with to go help with another cipher or move it to the exit gate. Sometimes it will run out, and that's kind of the downside now with mechanic is that her bot decoding is a lot slower. Of course, Mechanic still puts the survivors in a situation where they only need four ciphers to win the game because they have an extra sort of body on the field that can do an entire cipher machine for free. But the downside is that, of course, the bot decodes a lot slower now, so the energy goes by. Um, by the time the cipher machine's done, more energy's been used on the bot, and you have less energy to work with in the late game, which means less supporting of teammates with cipher machines and less um, time to get to the exit gate before your bot dies and open the exit gate with your bot. So that's the downside again with Mechanic, is that that was nerfed. Uh, besides that, still very strong character. If Mechanic gets sound first and the bot's in place, still going to be a draw or win for survivors because the bot can, again, do an entire cypher machine for free by itself, which is just really strong. Um, it makes it so the survivors only need four cyphers to win the game. Uh, mechanic can also rescue while decoding, she can decode with her bot and go for a save. She can decode while kiting. If she uh, goes to throw down a pallet, she can check her bot, put it back on a cypher machine while the hunter's breaking the pallet, then keep transitioning, whatever it may be. This is what makes her stronger than all the other decoders, is even if she sits on the rock, is down, found first and downed first and put on the rocket chair first, she can continue to support the cypher rush, support the decoding while sitting on the rocket chair while dead. And that is what makes her S tier over the other decoders. Is that just the being the, the again? Cipher rush is so important. The ability to be able to continue constantly do that throughout the matches mechanic is so strong, and that's what makes her an S tier character. The next character in S tier is Priestess. Now Priestess 
the reason why she's so incredibly strong, but the reason why she's not um, like one of the, the best in characters in S tier is because she is somewhat map dependent. There are a few maps that she does um, sometimes struggle on, specifically Arms Factory, very weak on Arms Factory. There's so many thin walls on Arms Factory where the portals are just so much less effective. Um, so that's kind of the biggest downside. Uh, two priests is that she is map dependent. She's pretty much strong in every other map. She's not quite as strong in Lakeside Village as some other maps, but she's still very strong in that map. To, you know, she can loop the big boat area. She can set up some portals at small boat, which are very strong. Um, and she's still just strong in that map in general. But that's probably her second worst map besides arms. But I mean, other than that, other than arms, she's good on pretty much every map. She's a very good supporter. What, what makes Priestess so good is that she can kite, she can support, and she can rescue. And um, that's what makes her incredibly strong. Um, the ability to... If the hunter wants to cut them off from a distance, the priest can off from a distance, she can just portal through a, like some building or something and get to the chair and make the save. She can portal on chair, which means which makes the hunter go through the, the portal, get stunned, and she gets a free rescue. Uh, that's what we call portal trick. Uh, portal trick on, while rescuing. She can also do the portal trick while going through a portal and then double back and try to break the hunter's ankles. That also sometimes will work. Uh, there's just so many things that Priestess can do. Uh, she's very strong, again, on maps with large buildings like Chinatown, Ever Sleeping Town, Sacred Heart Hospital. You can set up portals for your teammates to kite with. Uh, you can portal for yourself to kite with. On top of all of that, on top of all of her great support, all of her great kiting and, um, and rescuing, she also has the Ultra Long Portal, also known as the World Portal. And that portal is really strong because uh, that can do a few things. It's mainly used for helping a survivor after they've been rescued on a rocket chair. So if you're rescued from a rocket chair, they can run to the world portal, go through it. Uh, the hunter knocks them down. Priestess has already gone through after them. Priestess has increased healing. She can just heal the survivor that was knocked down through the, the ultra long portal, get them back up before the hunter reaches them, and they get a free rebound kite. And that just wastes a lot of time for free. If the hunter doesn't have teleport, they're essentially screwed. Um, on top of that, you can also use it, again, late game. If someone else has opened the exit gate, you can just ultra long portal yourself to the gate, get out for free, and just go out the gate. Or, if you're the one that opened the gate as the priestess, ultra long portal your teammates, and they can get out together. Um, so that's also, uh, so that's also very strong as well, um, you know, with priestess. And that's what makes priestess, uh, you know, mid S tier, one of the best characters in the game. She can support, she can kite, she can rescue. She really has so many traits that make her incredibly strong. A lot of hunters. She is one of the more common bands in tournament and ranked gameplay as well. Because hunters just do not want to deal with her. I'm sure, you know, if you're playing hunter and you're like, oh, I hate this roach or whatever. I mean, I've heard people say that so much. I hate the roach. I hate roach because Priestess' nickname is roach. Um, and yeah, because of all these things, Priestess is S tier. And uh, just an incredibly strong character overall. The next character in A plus tier is Mercenary. Now, Mercenary, you know, a little bit back, way back when, we had five level pads, or even four. He was probably one of the best characters in the game, if not the best. But now, uh, Mercenary, you know, he's been nerfed over time to a point where he's still very strong. He still has three elbow pads to work with, which is really good. On top of that, he has that uh, that delayed effect, which he takes 15 extra seconds for the damage to, to, to register once he's taken a hit. Um, he can also has 10% increased chair persistence, which makes him not really chaseable. If you chase a mercenary first with the three elbow pads, with the delayed effect, and with him being able to sit on the rocket chair 10% longer than other survivors, it never becomes worth it. So much so to a point that you're just probably going to lose the game if you ch chase mercenary first. So mercenary being a pretty much unchaseable character is very good for survivors. It promotes rotation. Um, you know, if you find the mercenary first then um if you find the mercenary first then that that just sucks because you typically have to leave them go chase a new survivor and that wastes a lot of time for them to kind of just decode for free um on top of that he is the best um non-harassing rescue character in the game because he can't it's so hard to actually stuff a mercenary it's very rare to do that if you tear if you're a non-chip hunter and you terror shock the mercenary he's still making the rescue because he has 30 seconds of that delayed effect. So even if you hit the mercenary and get a terror shock, he's still able to make the save. Sure, he'll go down 30 seconds later, but he's still making that rescue. It's just so hard to stop a mercenary. If you cut him off from a distance, get a hit on him, and then somehow get back to the chair before he does, and then get another hit on him, he's not getting stuffed because he has the 30 seconds of delayed effect because it's you know two regular hits, 15 times two, 30 seconds. Uh, so that's just what makes him so strong. 
Now, hunters that can stuff him, stuff him are sculptor. It's very hard for a sculptor to stuff him because it's hard to to get chips without full presence. Uh, but Bonbon can technically stuff him in some instances. Uh, if you're able to uh, get enough bombs and then maybe a terror shock or something, but for the most part, mercenary is un uh, unstuffable. For the most part, he can almost he can pretty much guarantee almost every rescue, even if it does mean him getting terror shocked or double hit. Obviously, you don't want that to happen, but if it does, you can still get the save. So mercenary is just really strong. He's unchaseable. He has really good rescue potential. If the hunter tries to cut you off from a distance, just elbow pad past them, make the rescue every time, and it's just so strong. He's also very good late game. If the hunter finds the mercenary late game, the hunter this mercenary is full health, and the hunter has detention. If they hit the mercenary, they're forced to down near and exigate. They're forced to down the mercenary. They can't just leave them and change targets. If they change targets, mercenaries can open the entire exit gate for free. The exit gate opens in about 20 seconds, and mercenary would would take in that instance 30 seconds to go down. So the hunter is essentially forced to hit them twice to kill them in the end game with detention. Normally with detention you want to kill people instantly, but you're not able to do that if you down a mer if you try to hit a mercenary while they're near the exit gate while they have full health. You have to down them completely or else they're just going to open that gate for free. Uh, because of these things, mercenary is S tier. Very strong character. Best non-harassing rescuer in the game. Mercenary S tier. Okay, moving on to the last two characters in S tier. Uh, the first one is Seer. Uh, now, Seer has moved up. He has kind of been in lower S tier, but uh, over this last season, Seer has become incredibly strong. Breaking Wheel and um, Dream, which have kind of taken over the meta. As you guys know, Sculptor recently got nerfed. It just kind of dropped down a little bit. Seer is still strong against Sculptor, but especially against Breaking Wheel and especially against Dream, which Seer is always the first ban that both of these characters ban. Seer is so hard for Breaking Wheel to deal with because if you get two spikes on a survivor and you try to, uh, you know, you try to get them down, they're just going to Seer Owl. They're just going to use the Seer Owl to absorb the hit and, yeah, and uh, Breaking Wheel loves to one-shot survivors. And you can't do that if you have a Seer Owl in play. Um, so that's kind of the, uh, the downside to that. So that's why a lot of breaking rules will ban Seer. Um, on top of that, uh, Seer is also really good against Dream Witch. Because Dream Witch is a character that, again, loves to just get two hits and down. You want to try to double patrol or get it down, or you want to try to, you know, trap a survivor in, get a patroller down. Just get two hits and get it down. You can't do that if you have a Seer Owl. Seer Owl forces three hits. Seer is essentially another character that breaks the game. He forces every first kiter to take three uh being able to it makes it so you can take every first kiter can take three hits because if you give the owl to the first kiter they can take three hits they turn them into a psychologist on top of that they have their kiting abilities plus the ability to make everyone you know anyone who kites first take three hits is just so strong uh he can he's also a pretty good kiter himself if he looks behind him when he kites he can farm more owls and make it so he can take extra hits owl can literally absorb detention hits for free it's just so strong it's just incredibly hard for hunters to deal with um on top of that it's sort of the match seer can see where the hunter is for five seconds which is pretty good you can communi communicate to your teammates where the hunter's going and they can rotate accordingly and hide away from the hunter and uh that can be very strong as well so seer not much to say about him he makes the first kiter be able to take three hits um he has the ability to farm more owls if necessary uh he's a good kiter because he can get more owls and uh he's just such a strong he is the best like just sort of single support character in the game with that one owl can change the entire match in some places. And that's what makes Seer an S tier character. And long, uh, at long last, we have the last character in S tier, and that is Forward. Now, Forward, uh, I think last season I had him as second best and Mechanic as best, but now Forward, with Mechanic's nerf, Forward has taken the first play spot in terms of best character in the game in s tier that's forward uh forward support potential is just so strong beyond any character in the entire game even more than something like entomologist um, or priestess forward has the ability to change what we say uh just to change games you can turn losses to ties ties to wins even losses to wins it's incredible um Ford has really good uh, uh, harassing. He's the best harassing character in the game. Uh, just little instances. If a hunter downs a survivor, they can crawl up against the wall and the Ford can harass. If they try to pick it up, the Ford will stun. If the uh, hunter goes for the Ford, they'll just football away. And then the hunter will try to go back to the survivor. The Ford's football cooldown will be up and they can go right back to harassing. And if they can put themselves in a position where the survivor can heal, the Ford can go for a stun. Then the survivor can heal it at the same time. They can time it. And then they can just kind of get up and, you know, just off to the races yet again. 
Um, so that's sort of the uh, the upside to Ford is he's such a good harassing character. Another strategy you'll see with Ford is that sometimes in tournaments you'll see survivors kite near a forward, and um, and when the hunter hits that survivor goes into attack recovery, the forward will stun as the attack recovery is wearing off. And it makes a lot of distance between um, the the hunter and the survivor, and it forces them to to go catch up to them, and it takes a long time. Or sometimes it'll force them to change targets to the forward, which is really bad because the forward is such a good kiter. He has increased pallet throwing speed. Uh, he has that football to kite with it. It's very hard to actually catch a forward as a hunter. So Ford has very good support. Um, he can also stun on chair rescue if. Uh, the same thing we're talking about with batter. If you, the hunter's in the chairing animation and it's a good camping hunter, like a bonbon or a sculptor, the hunter, the uh, the Ford can just stun the hunter while they're in the chair animation and just get a guaranteed rescue as long as they don't have excitement. And that's very strong as well because it allows the survivor to rebound. The Ford can just keep stunning the hunter over and over, allow the hunt the the survivor to get really far away. Um, that was rescued, and they can get a free rebound kite. So Ford, while they may have slow decoding, he is the best harasser in the game. Um, <coughs> One of the best supporters in the game because of that football, even more so than uh, than Priestess Entomologist in some instances, or even Seer. That's what makes him the best character in the game. Ford is the hardest character in the game to play, but once mastered, he is incredibly strong, and uh, you always want to have a Ford on your team if possible, because again, Ford can shift losses to ties, ties to wins, even losses to wins um, with his incredible support. And that is what makes Ford S-tier and the best character in the game. And finally, that's going to wrap it up for the tier list video. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any comments you'd like to add, something that possibly I missed or something you want to discuss about any of these characters, don't forget to let me know in the comment section below. I'll try to get as many com to as many comments as possible. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. That's always the goal with these videos. If you like the videos, always don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace out for now, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.